Hi everyone, this is Navila Zaman and today I'm back with another video. In this video, we are going to be starting this chapter of O-level biology, that is respiration. This is a very interesting chapter, so stay tuned. Now to understand why respiration takes place, we need to know that why do we even need any sort of energy. So we need energy in our body to contract muscles, synthesize proteins for cell division, that is to make new cells, for growth of our body and to enable active transport to take place as we have learned in chapter 3 that active transport requires energy. Also to allow nerve impulses to be generated and as well as to maintain a constant internal body temperature. We need energy for a lot of other things but these are the most significant ones. So energy helps us to get the energy. So respiration helps us to get the energy that we need to do those tasks. Now we have all learned about breathing, but respiration and breathing are in the same. So respiration is a chemical process or chemical reaction in all living cells that release energy from glucose. These reactions occur inside the cell and inside the mitochondria, which is known as the powerhouse of the cell. What is breathing? Breathing is a mechanical process in which ventilation of air occurs by contractions and relaxations of muscle and movement of ribs that results in the gas exchange in alveoli. So breathing is basically when we take in oxygen and let out carbon dioxide. This is a mechanical process. So and respiration is a chemical process and it occurs inside the cells, whereas breathing occurs outside the cells. So these are the main differences between breathing and respiration. Now, there are two types of respiration, that is aerobic and anaerobic respiration, and let us learn about both of them. So, aerobic respiration is defined as the chemical reactions in cells that use oxygen to break down glucose to release energy. So, we know that aerobic respiration requires energy, and here, more amount of energy is released than anaerobic respiration. The products are carbon dioxide and water, that is CO2 and H2O, and the reaction site is cytoplasm and mitochondria. So this is the chemical equation of aerobic respiration, that is glucose plus oxygen is equal to carbon dioxide plus water plus a large amount of energy, that is 30 to ATP. What is ATP? ATP is basically adenosine triphosphate, and it is known as the universal energy currency. So it can be stored in all living cells, and it is an energy stored in this particular um, substance. And whenever our body requires any sort of energy, the activity of enzymes, um, then this ATP can basically be hydrolyzed and energy can be released. And this energy can be used in different living processes of the body. So what it does is that it releases 32 ATPs. This is just the chemical equation. If you want, you can write this down as well. This is very important. Now let's go to anaerobic respiration. So anaerobic respiration is defined as the chemical reaction in cells that break down glucose molecules to release energy without using oxygen. So we know that in anaerobic respiration, it does not require any sort of oxygen and there is also less energy produced that is 2 ATP. And in aerobic respiration, we learn that it releases 32 ATP. So definitely aer anaerobic respiration releases quite a small amount of energy. The products actually depend on the organism and in plants and microorganisms the end product is CO2 and alcohol, CO2 and C2H5OH which is basically alcohol and in muscles of animals we get the product as lactic acid and there is often a misconception that carbon dioxide is released as well but it is not. And the reaction site is not mitochondria, but rather cytoplasm. Now, if we have aerobic respiration that releases such a large amount of energy, then why do we even require an aerobic respiration? So anaerobic respiration mainly takes place in muscle cells during vigorous exercise. When we exercise vigorously, our muscles uh, require a higher amount of higher demand for energy than when we are resting. So basically what it does that aside besides like aerobic respiration, it also carries out anaerobic respiration. 
Our body can only deliver so much oxygen to our muscle cells for aerobic respiration. And in this instance, as much glucose as possible is broken down without oxygen. And some glucose is broken down without it, which produces lactic acid. So the products of an anaerobic respiration in animals is only lactic acid. Now there is still energy stored within the bonds of lactic acid molecules that the cell could use. And for this reason, less energy is released when glucose is broken down anaerobically. Now there is one disadvantage of this is because lactic acid is harmful to our body. So we have to do something else so that we can remove all the lactic acid of our body. And that is why um, our, we have this like entire concept of oxygen death. However, we are going to discuss that in the next video. So stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for staying till the end. If you found this helpful, then definitely share this video with your friends as well so that they can be benefited as well. Also like this video and comment down below what you think because it really helps the algorithm and it will motivate us to keep making more videos. Thank you so much. Bye.